everyone. Mary at Espresso Press Design. Welcome. Get out your scrappy fabric and your safety pins or paper clips. Today we're going to be making shabby scrappy rag pins. And right at the moment I start, you're going to hear footsteps above my head. Sorry about that. I was trying to wait, but not wanting to wait. My daughter's getting out of school early today, so that would be her and my husband coming in the house. So first a little um, housekeeping as usual. newest kit and um, the reason I'm a day late is yesterday I was filming and all of a sudden the power went out but I had turned off the lights so that this the lights wouldn't wash out my color so much but I guess if I get closer you'll be able to see pretty well although it's not truly representative of the colors and whatnot, but this is Christmas Treasures. I'm second time I've used this illustrator, and actually, I've combined two illustrators, but their the illustrations matched so perfectly and went so well together. I combined two, and um, this is just a 14 page kit, but um, I have tried to arrange things so that if you wanted to fussy cut out some little elements out of each page, you can. And look at that gorgeous image. I've, um, there's another one I love. And I've designed this to be not only a journal, writing journal, but a keepsake journal. So some pages, um, my thought was that, you know, you would have envelopes or something in between to keep your Christmas cards, keepsakes, whatever. So some pages are a little busier than others. And um, the tags were part of the design. You can cut them out if you desire, but I will be, um, I can't sell them as is, as a standalone. They have to be incorporated into a design, but I will find a way to incorporate them into ephemera. For the um, add-on in Etsy in the Mega Kit in Shopify, and some pages have a little more nature, but they are generally everything we love about Christmas. The treats, the anticipation, the invitations, the dressing up, the uh, abundance of everything that we all love about Christmas. The food, the tea. Did I show the one with the teapot? Yeah. Love that, love that cup and love that teapot. I had a hard time deciding which images to use because they're all, I just love that person's work. It's right up my alley. And then today, um, I want to try to redeem myself for my last week's project. I went back and used all the scraps on my desk and tried to make these envelopes a little more presentable. And finished that up, got all my notes transferred, put the back on, which is just some wallpaper. Thought that would be a sturdy sturdy choice for that type of thing and then I went and made another one because I wanted to learn how to make it properly 
and how I could fancy it up a little. But as I said before, I'm sure you could layer paper and fabric. And I did realize that I should have made sure that my envelope folds were flush with the edge of my back page. I shouldn't have had that bulk coming off the side. So I just whipped up this little thing with some little, and that'll go somewhere. Who knows where, but somewhere. Okay, so um, some thank yous to um, Marcia, Phyllis, Marcy, Amy, Janet, Wanda, Sharon, and Catherine. I believe it's Catherine by your acronym. But thank you so much for your order. I appreciate it so much, and I appreciate your kind comments. So today, this was inspired in part by um, a fiber artist named Karen Michelle. She has a great name logo too, by the way. I couldn't snag a picture of her particular work, but it's on Pinterest under Pretty Little Paper Crafts and uh, Ideas from Fabric. I have so many pens on that board I've had to categorize them. But I have examples from her and a couple other people. I'll try to snag an image and put it in the video for my inspiration. So I also, um, since she, she sells her little pens, I borrowed her packaging idea and I made some little packaging. I thought these would be nice if you wanted to send out some Christmas treats to your Happy Mail friends. I think these would look super cute on a jean jacket pocket. So that's there if you desire. And um, two people led to this inspiration and one was Mrs. Cog. She made something similar, but she did it um, using paper clips. You can also use paper clips. But what led to me was um, I have these pins that are beginning to oxidize. And um, they're starting to look pretty cool and pretty shabby. So along with that inspiration that I've had my eye on. My pins were starting to look pretty cool, and um, so I did some with um, small pins and some with large pins. And um, I just have it here on a book as an example of how you might use it, of course, in a journal or whatever. So of course you're going to have to keep in mind that you're going to need something to pin it to as well as um, something sturdy enough to pin it to. So I'm not going to show how I began I'm going to show the mass makes instead because that went a lot faster. But how I began was taking my scrap fabric, my fabric scraps. So that's what you'll need. You'll need your fabric scraps, some pens, whatever trim you desire your buttons, your junk jewelry, charms, what, however you want to embellish them. But at first I began by um, 
taking the little pieces of fabric and piecing them together kind of like a cluster. And I quickly realized, <laughs> well, that's a way you can do it if you just want to use up some little scraps on the fly. Um, that's fine. And I just, for my part that hangs on the pin, I just use a little tab of lace. You could use ribbon or a little piece of fabric like these ones. Or then I moved on to mass making. And that was where I trying to get out my ones that I made yesterday. That is where I came up with this idea to mass make a bunch. And you just take strips of fabric. And these ones are a lot shorter now because I cut some off. And then you just cut them into pieces, kind of like a master board. So I'm just going to show you that one because this one is pretty self-explanatory. And if you do not want to sew, these you can staple and glue. Some I did glue when I got to the end of making these and I just wanted to try the paper clip. These are just fabric tech on and I don't think they'll be going anywhere. So if you're nervous about sewing, and then I just want to keep these out to show you some little ideas that I gathered from her that I thought were cool. These are the ones couple of the ones I made yesterday when the power went out. So that's what I'm going to do, just show you how to assemble them basically and I'll cut out a couple, do a little bit of decorating and that will be it. So the cool thing about this is that you can layer up as many pieces of fabric as you desire. You can make it patchwork style where you just have a little piece of fabric here and then say you had another little piece here. As long as you're going across one or two seams that you can keep them together you can put as many different types of fabric in there as you want. You can add some lace. Some of them I added lace. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. Some of these ones I cut apart have more than one type of lace. So when it, I began to cut it apart, I ended up with something completely different than the whole. So kind of like surprise cuts or a master board. That's actually pretty cool. So I might add a little bit of lace to this one when I sew it. But what I want to say is that I have one of these sewn here. The thing you most have to remember is to keep your hem wide enough to get your pin in the hem because you have to thread your pin in closed and then um, it has to fit in that channel. And also if you have a paper clip, it has to fit in that channel like so. So that's the most basic thing you have to remember is to keep your hem wide enough to fit your pin through it. And then um, if, like for example, when I fold this over the top, naturally one side is going to be 
the reverse of the fabric. That didn't bother me because it ended, ended up leaving a nice back. But if it bothers you, what you can do is do what I did here, which for this particular fabric, it's a very thin cotton. If you wanted something a little more substantial, you would just fold it up and then you will have the nice fabric on both sides. So that's pretty self-explanatory for you sewers out there. And then um, again, it's just making sure that all your pieces are lined up. I might, well, no, I'm probably going to fray this edge so I don't mind if it's the same length at the moment because I'm going to fray that edge. And then just make sure that everything you want in there is going to get secured before you do your hem. And I just um, pretty much tacked everything in there, each layer with a layer of um, glue stick, and then took it over to my sewing machine and did the hem. So I hope that's, I hope to save time, you know, I'm not going to be sitting here sewing buttons and everything. And I'm just going to cut up a few here and decorate them quickly. But a few of the things that I saw that I particularly liked about hers. I'm going to bring this up here so you can see. When she did her little charms, she didn't use a jump ring. She um, basically, you know, did a U fabric, a string of fabric up through the back so that you could have two strings. And then she just tied her little charms on there. So I thought that was very cute. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if you can, but I did that too. The ones that had charms, they're just basically tied on, and then I let the little embroidery thread hang down the back. And the other cool thing is that you can, um, your pen has a little hole Your pen has a little hole there at the end. You can dangle a charm from that little hole. And you can also tie a little piece of rag to that hole. So that, that was what, another thing feature that she had. And you can use anything. This one I just had a little... Um, raggy strip there and I wanted it to lie flat so I just slow stitched through it and added another little something to it and um, there's my thread hanging down from the back oh and that's another thing if you don't want your buttons button um, attachment to show through the back. Just go through the first two or three la layers so that it's between, so that it's not showing through the back. That's the back and there's no button, no button attachment threads there on that, that piece. That would be how you would hide your button threads, but this one was assembled with the little tab and there's the little tab on the back. So I think that's um, there was one here. Where'd you go? 
Where did you go? The little orange button. Oh, there it is. Eventually, I got tired of dealing with um, embroidery thread. So I just began to sew my buttons on with a little thin ribbon. <laughs> and that was a little difficult to get through the fabric, but I managed. So that added another little scrappy design to the project. This one will probably be going in boho. But yeah, you can attach whatever you want to them. So this is the time to get out your trim, your lace, whatever. And I think And then the other thing is that um, I think I'll be using another of these, more of these. And I'll cut off a couple of pieces here. But the other thing is to measure how much width you have. You only have between the hole and the head of the pin. So that's where you'll be measuring the width of your fabric. And this one in particular was a little bit wide, so I had to just trim off the top there a little bit, kind of like a tag, to make sure it wasn't catching on the head or whatever. So that's a way you can remedy that. So sorry I'm explaining rather than demonstrating, but I don't. I just felt like that would be the best way to explain this project without actually having to um, sit here sewing on buttons and whatnot when it's um, yours will likely be different anyway. So I just kept my pin there with a basic, um, you know, grid. Made a little mark to make sure it was shorter than my pen. And then I just began to cut my fabric in strips. like so, before I began decorating. So, and hers were, um, a lot of hers were more square. So, you know, this, you know, the rectangle is just, just because of the way I layered up my fabric, but hers were more um, square and how can I explain it? More little pieces hand sewn together to form kind of like a quilt. It's not exactly straight. So let me straighten this up a little. So hers were kind of like, I don't know, picture a little quilt block. with a lot of interest. <laughs> it's probably the best way I can describe hers. So you'll just have to pop over there and take a look. I couldn't, um, she had her photos on in a way that they weren't downloadable. I suppose I could have taken a screenshot but she, and she had several different categories like on her packaging she had some that said um, you are loved you are awesome 
I think some said magic charms, things like that. So let me just get a pin through these here and show you how that goes. There's one. This pin is really rough. It looks a little bent. But yeah, I think you could do all kinds of things with these. And maybe if you have a teenager on your list, that might be something um, that they would like. I think I'm, and I'm just going to um, glue these embellishments on here today instead of instead of um, sewing. But um, all of my embellishments, I pretty much either hand sewed or. Um, did on the machine. I think I don't want that like that, or probably, probably I'm going to cover that up a little bit and pop a little flower on there. Um, so yeah, for the glue, I'm going to use mostly fabric things and stay away from the buttons, but, um, she had some with buttons on, she had some with metals on, you know, like saint metals, relic type things, and, um, she had some with seashells on um, and she had some with charms so tons of inspiration and I'm sure I'm sure on Etsy there are people doing these things too and um, after I clicked on hers I began to see more examples of them. And um, other than the title of hers, I don't think she has in magic charms or whatever. I don't know that she had a particular name for them. But um, I think I'm going to call them scrappy, shabby, scrappy rag pins or something to that effect. And where'd my other lace go? I wanted to. Try a little bit of this with this. See how that looks. I just get a square. I don't want to lose my polka dots. That's for sure. And I don't want to lose all of my stripe. And I don't want to lose my paisley. So. Make that a little smaller. Tuck that under there. That's cute. Hopefully I'm in frame here. Where am I? 30? Okay. So I don't want this to go on too long. There are two minutes here. So 
So yeah, yesterday was after I after the power went out and then it came back on and I uploaded the video, I realized I had Well, I turned off my lights so that my color wouldn't get bleached out. And then I realized I had um, the sun is lower. So I also had a little sunlight, sun rays interfering up in that area. And I just decided, okay, I'm just... I think I'll just concede defeat today and do this again tomorrow. I don't know why the electric went out, but it was a little windy. Nothing too terrible. And that needs a little something. Probably what it needs. I don't have all of my buttons out here. But that would probably do nice with a tiny button. So I'll probably hand sew that on. And um, some more Where's my other one like that from yesterday? Get these arranged here for you. So remember, if you want to mass make, where'd you go? Do them like so. Um, you can also put them on a paper clip. I'm not going to take the time to show you how to thread that on, but basically you put your clip through and then you kind of scrunch it and get it. Um, you want it hanging off your large end of your clip so that your small end of your clip is what attaches to the page. So you'll just have to figure that one out for yourself. Um, where'd you go? Now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, this, this trim is probably going to look cute with that. And so there, now you, now you see I have a whole bunch of these. Actually, these might be something I might actually try to do some a little better and put some in my boutique do I dare go and buy more fabric and trim I don't know since this was the desire for this was to get rid of um, empty this overflowing thing which I got it down about half and um, I just have a ton of scrap fabric lying around. Tons and tons of scrap fabric that I wanted to do something with. So that's a good idea for that. Oh, this is what I wanted to show. This little charm. It's also going to go perfect with this, and I can use that little um, braided thread as well to add to those colors. So just dig through your stuff, and um, yeah, this this is a way to use all of it. I think they're cute. I think they'll make a cute little gift. And um, even if you're not a um, master seamstress, another thing, let me just say one more thing. 
because I just noticed it. Mrs. Cog sewed her images on her paper clip ones, so don't forget you can also sew an image on there if you desire. So okay, I think I I think I covered everything. Um uh, yeah, I think I did. Don't forget to save these little strippy things to um, tie in your hole if you want. This one I tore up a little strip and made some little knots in the end. I think I did this one yesterday. And I think, I think that's it. So I'll see you next time everyone. Um, thanks for your time and thank you for um just thanks <laughs> thanks for visiting and i'll see you next time have a great week bye